Alrighty, in this video we're going to go through and let me close this. Set up the way for our key here, for example, to be attached to our door. So in the previous video we set up the sockets and all that that we need for it. So now we're going to set it up so we can attach it however we need. So the linked key, for example, is going to be attached to the socket if it has one. So, or sorry, not, not the linked key. We're going to have a, uh, uh, what do you call it? A separate, uh, separate slot for this, essentially. Let's go to the item.h. No. Let's close down the weight trigger. Go to the... There it is, the door. So here we have our linked key. Let's do the same thing and change linked key to linked uh, linked stored item. And do we have a begin play? Yes, we do. So here, we're doing authority check. So if, as authority, we want to set, well, we're doing actually two checks. So if has authority, and our linked stored item is valid, we want to attach the linked stored item to the corresponding socket s underscore item, which we have positioned right in the middle here of the door. All right, back again. So we have our mesh component. So mesh component. Here we can search for something related to socket. So here we have, does socket exist? And that's going to kind of dictate our logic for this. So takes in an F name. And that name is going to be S underscore item. So we're going to have this as the next check. So we're going to have three in here. So if we are the server, if our linked stored item is valid, and we have a socket that exists, because we only want to do this in that order. So we only want to check if the socket exists if we have a stored item linked to it, and if we are on the server. So, we set the linked stored item. We want to attach that item to pretty much that socket. So, linked stored item, attached to component. We want to attach it to the mesh component. And then from there, let's see other parameters. There we go. F attachment transform rules. We want to attach or snatch does target, not including scale. And then it should have the name of the socket. So F name, S underscore item. So if these conditions are met, we take that item that's linked and attach it. So let's go ahead and close down the editor and relaunch it to see what happens. Alrighty, uh, I don't care to open the assets back up. Let's just see. Actually, we need to set the, uh, where is it? The link stored item. So we'll just set that to the unlocking key. Okay, so the key has disappeared. Let's walk into it. And as we can see, the key is now in there. Like so. So we can take it. We should be able to pick up the key, which we cannot because of the box or the physics asset. So what's happening? Uh, let's see, how can I try to, let me duplicate these two. Okay. Let me move them closer to the middle. So we have light. So what's happening, slow you down too, I'm going all over the place, is this asset is, you know, it's sitting in where it's supposed to, somewhere in there. So this is our key that we're trying to pick up. And as you can see, it is inside the drawer here. However, if we look at the collision mesh, or the physics body for this drawer, it is over top of everything. It's like one big, you know, one big mesh, or one big collision. So what we're going to have to do is make, pretty much alter this so we have a different way to handle it. So we want to be able to have an open section for this, you know, the inside of here. So what we're going to do is scale down like so move that to the front 
can actually scale it up a little bit. Move a little slower. There we go. And then we want to duplicate. Oh, cool. We can't duplicate. Can I copy and paste? Uh, let's see. No, I don't think we can. So we're going to add another box. This one, again, it's going to go pretty much all the way, like so. I mean, ultimately, we really don't need these sidewalls or anything. But I don't see a reason necessarily not to, aside from collision issues. Now we're going to do that. And I also I don't want to go quite as far. So somewhere like that. Move you over, scale you down on this side. And, wow, I am really tall. I didn't realize how high up that was. Okay, I'm going to go into the, let's see, it's the right side. No, it's the back view should show me. There we go. Now I can see a lot better. Get back a little bit. And there we have that one. Go down just a little bit. And there we have that wall. Okay, let's add another box. It's going to do the exact same thing. And just get it fairly close. Oops. So there's the height. Let's go to the top. Scale it down on that side. And we want to have one more. Add one more box. Scale it out this way. Go to the left or right will be fine. Yeah. Scale it up this way. And go to perspective. Okay, so obviously we want to scale it down some. And we don't need to be nearly as tall. We're going to have it right here. And that should give us pretty much a full opening view underneath. So, now let's just kind of look and see. We can now pick it up. We still have collision for the drawer. In which case, we can continue. Okay, so that is working as intended. Uh, let's see. That is still linked to the unlocking key. So we cannot open the door like normal. We walk into that, we pick up the key. Now we can open the door, that works. Let's check with two clients for a replication. And of course he spawns out here. So let's see, where's that network spawn doohickey? There we go. Okay, we walk into it. There's the key. Pick up the key. And we can open the door. Okay, so everything replication-wise is good to go. We still have our fancy back and front flip. That's perfect. We need that for obvious reasons. And we are good to go. So we now have everything linked up for having keys inside of drawers, being able to pick them up and use them and all that fun stuff. So that's... Yeah, that's handled appropriately. Let's see, is there anything else that needs to be done? I can actually delete these two now. Have our door. What are you? Random item. Okay, so that pretty much takes care of that. Yeah, I think that's about it for now. Uh, let's see, there should be something regarding locking. Did we ever set that up? No, we did not. I thought we had something regarding uh, locking the door. The unlocked. Okay, so we're going to have to have some form of locked boolean. So that confuses me a bit. 
movie out of the way. I don't remember what we did there, because right now I can open these however I need to, but not the door. Or is that because I have different logic in here? It's link key. So if that fails. Okay, so we have to have a linked key in order for the door to be, you know, forced or unlocked and locked. So we might want to have a custom boolean here that dictates whether or not we can simply unlock or lock the door. So that's something we're going to have to do. Uh, let's see, or is it? I'm trying to think. So we can set this up so if we have a linked stored item, it cannot be unlocked either. Well, it cannot be used by default either, so let's try that. We're going to do, eh, you know, we'll do this in the next video because it's kind of like a different little subject. So we're going to stop this for now. Okay, so in the next video, what we're going to do is set up that locking mechanism that I talked about and try to simplify this up a bit. So let's see, we're not duplicating that usage. No, we are not. So what we're going to do is... Oh, what's my brain doing? We're going to set it up so have a simple boolean for whether or not the door starts locked or the drawer, whatever it is. If it is starting locked, we're going to have the this be unlocked check. Let's see. Meaning it's, wait. Okay, so there's, uh, well, no. Is that is still, yeah, that's still, eh, I'll, I'll think of something different because I kind of want to, refactor this a little bit because I'm not all that happy with it. So we're going to have some checks, just a simple boolean so we can have a checkbox to start the door locked or unlocked. And if it starts locked, obviously we cannot open it until we have some other factor that goes through and unlocks it for us. So for example, because this is only unlocked through this trigger weight pad here, I do not want this door to be able to be opened or closed by a person. This one, because it has nothing that controls it, I want the person to be able to freely open and close the drawer. And if I set it to where it has a linked key, like so, I want it to only be able to be opened if the user has this key. So by default, now I cannot open that drawer, but I op I walk into this one, it opens that up, I try to pick up the key. Let's say I pick up the key from that drawer, then I want to be able to open this. Kind of like how our door works. Okay, so yeah, that's what we're going to do. Sorry, I had to kind of figure that out for myself. Anyhow, that's going to be it for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for patrons using Unreal Engine with C++. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to contact me through the Discord in the description, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.